Hey everybody, Fred here from plcgurus.net. So you're following along in our C Sharp video series here, our C Sharp HMI video series, that is. And in the last video, we started into a test project, we're calling it, that really starts to show the implementation details of how we connect to a Control Logics PLC via our C Sharp applications using the Ingear Net.Logix set of APIs or class libraries. So in the last video, we saw that we got the connect disconnect kind of functioning a little bit. Um, we set up some of the GUI objects that we're going to use. And again, this is a very, very straightforward test project that we're doing and nowhere near going to be production ready for a production environment. However, for proof of concept, I think it's going to serve us well as we move through this video series. So you can see I've got our Visual Studio test project application open. Our solution is open and let's get going and keep building some of that code that we were building in the last video. So let's get going. Okay, so I want to get started by first beefing up or maybe making our connect and disconnect methods a little bit more robust in that we're going to do a couple additional checks before we say, hey, we're connected or we're disconnected. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to start up in the connect method first. And after we attempt to make the connection, making the, the connect method call, to the ingear libraries, I'm gonna go and do a little test here. So I'm gonna go if my PLC dot is connected. Remember, this is a property that we have access to through the um, controller APIs or the controller interface and the object we're instantiating here. And this should return true if we actually connected to the corresponding PLC at the IP address 172.16.10.10. So let's go ahead and, and enclose some brackets there. And now I'm going to go ahead and just move some of this stuff that we had initially set up and then control X and put it in this block now. Because remember last time we just kind of fired the, the label saying we're connected, disconnected uh, simply when we were pushing the buttons. But we didn't really verify that we were in fact connected before we did that. So doing this little simple check here now if my plc dot is connected we're actually getting a status update of the connection then we'll say yes you know what we are connected and we'll switch the visibility or the the animation on the buttons accordingly so that's what i wanted to do there now what i want to do is i want to go ahead and set up the reading of this tag now remember we said that we were going to go ahead and sample the read of this tag at some continuous sample rate that we are going to define. Now, this is a very common mechanism that we want to have the ability to do. I mean, it's one of those things that we want to have the ability to do for sure. I mean, there's other ways we can do it. I mean, this is going to set up a, a continuous polling of the tag, which may or may not be efficient depending on the type of value that you're reading and what you're doing. So, I mean, if we're reading an analog value that we want to tie to a trend, then we want to sample that at some very consistent rate. But again, we're pulling it. There are other ways that we can sample tags. We can do it on, on a change event. So for instance, if a tag value changes, then we trigger it to, to, to read or we could do an explicit read on some other trigger. So maybe a limit switch in the field gets actuated and we wanna read a value or something. I mean, there are many different ways that we can set up to read and write tags. But for this example, I thought, you know what, let's do something a little bit more interesting and set up a continuous read on a tag at some sample rate that we define. Okay, so to do that, we're going to have to add a couple things to our namespace here. Namely, I'm going to add the using system.timers. So we're going to make use of the timer namespace to set up an additional thread that's going to continuously look or read the tag for us at some predefined interval that we're going to set up here. And so now all we have to do is add some variables to make use of that timer 
um, class that we're going to be using. So I'm going to go ahead and call it private system dot timers dot timer. And the reason I'm using the fully qualified name here is because the windows.forms actually has a timer class built into it too. Um, so it, you'll get an error that it's ambiguous if you don't put the full qualifying name here. Uh, um, usually what I would do is I'd probably extrapolate this into its own class. But again, I'm not trying to teach you proper programming constructs in this video. Um, we're just looking at how we can use the different methods and properties um, to quickly collect data from a PLC, okay? So maybe we'll talk about proper programming procedures in another video. Uh, however, let's keep going. And maybe we'll call this tag sample timer. And then I'm going to create another one and let's make this one a constant. So I'm going to give it the, the keyword const double tag sample time. Okay, so we're going to use the sample time and let's go ahead and give that a value. I don't know. Let's do one second for now. I mean, we can play with it if we want. Okay, so we have a, a, a tag or a variable here that we're going to instantiate the timer object with and then we have an update time. Okay, so now what I want to do is place something in here because we are going to be launching in a, a new thread and threading is a good thing to do uh, so that you know your GUI doesn't get locked up and when we launch or make a call to start the timer it actually forks off an additional thread so our GUI and, and things like that will still be responsive irregardless of us actually going out and pulling to read a value. So threading is a good thing. However, there are fail safes in place. If you don't implement the thread the way C Sharp kind of recommends you to uh, by calling workers, et cetera, et cetera, um, you're, it is going to complain. So to get around that now, again, I'm not teaching you C Sharp and how to do multi threaded applications. To get around that little issue, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to call control dot check for illegal cross thread calls and what we're going to do here is just simply may say don't do it okay now again for a production type application i mean you certainly don't want to disable this there are these checks are in place to make sure threads don't corrupt other threads and, and all of these things but for the purpose of this this tutorial i think we can just go ahead and disable it so it's not a problem for us okay so let's scroll down here a little bit and I want to go back into our connect statement here. So remember, we're, we're, we're calling the connect statement and then we're checking to ensure that we are in fact connected to the PLC. Now in here, I want to go ahead and instantiate that tag sample timer. And we're going to go ahead and say new system dot timers dot timer. And then we're going to give it, notice there's an overload to give it an interval. And we're going to use the tag sample time that we defined above of one second or 1,000 milliseconds or one second. Okay, so a couple other things or properties that we want to set here. Tag sample timer. And let's dot enabled equals true. So let me get the code in here and then we'll explain what it does. Okay, so we've got our code in. Oh, I got an error here. So I'm going to hover over that. I'm going to hit this little fly out and I want to generate that method. So this method is actually the thread new thread that's going to be getting called from our timer okay from our timer class so instantiating the timer enabling it setting the auto reset to true and then this is the event handler that once we're connected we're going to call this fork off this new trigger take update thread and then this read logic is going to actually be running in a separate thread from the GUI or form thread that we have here. So I don't want to get into threading. Hopefully you know what threading is, um, but threading is a good thing uh, because it allows your applications to do multiple things 
simultaneously. Otherwise, if I had to do a read, everything else in my GUI application would get blocked until that PLC read is done. So indicators wouldn't update, all those good things. So again, you want to have multi-threaded applications. Um, implementing them properly is another story. However, let's just keep going on with this example here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start implementing our trigger tag update thread here. So bear with me. So I'm going to say if my PLC dot retake, so I'm calling the retake method now, built, that's the in gear method that we're calling, my tag equals, and they have something called the result. And again, for all of the APIs and interfaces and classes and properties, please refer to the, uh, the, the online or the help manual that comes with the InGear software. But again, I mean, looking through the list, you get a good sense of what everything is. So we're going to say, okay, if my PLC read, I'm reading the tag, if the result code returned back is successful, meaning we successfully read the tag, then we want to do something. So we're going to go ahead and tag value window dot text. So that's our big window. Let's go back over here. So this is this guy here, right? So we're saying we want to update the text in that window. So we're going to say my tag dot value again a property we're just accessing the value property and we want to convert that to a string and so that's it so we're gonna if we've successfully read the tag we're gonna take that value convert it to a string and place it in our tag value window object on our GUI okay and then we also want to update the timestamp right so of when we actually read that tag so label timestamp.text equals my tag dot timestamp dot to string again putting it to a string okay and now it, let's handle it if you know we don't get a good read maybe we'll just go else tag value window dot text equals and again we'll put our question marks okay we don't know what the value of that tag is okay so i think we're looking pretty good here so let's go ahead and see what happens i've got my controller on okay so i've got to connect let's connect oh bang and there we go so you can see i'm reading a, a value from the controller let's get online with that controller just so you can actually see go online And you'll notice I just I have a blank project. All I really have here is one tag created with a value. So let's go ahead and change that value. Point, I don't know, something. So every second you see we are updating, which is great. And you look at the timestamp every second we are reading. Let me disconnect. And so now if I change that, we shouldn't get an update, although we still are. Okay, we have an issue here. All right, this is good. Why are we not disconnecting? So there's a problem in our disconnect. So this is good. So let's go, let's close this now and let's go take a look. I'm just going to minimize this for a second at why we may not be terminating. Okay, I, I know, I see what it is. The problem is we don't have to explicitly make a call to connect. If we attempt to read the tag, it will automatically try to make a connection just by calling the read tag method, okay? The issue here is my timer thread was still running in the background. I don't know if you caught that. Let me run it again just so you can see. Even though we were disconnected, so I'm gonna go ahead and connect. We should get a good read. Let's go up, let's change that value. And let me disconnect. Okay, so now I'm disconnected, but notice I'm still reading here. Do you see that? Even though I've effectively disconnected because my timer thread is still running in the background. So when we hit the disconnect button, what we have to do is kill off that thread or stop that thread. 
So let's go ahead and fix that right now. I'm just going to minimize this again. And this is a simple call here uh, in our disconnect method. We are just going to say tag sample timer dot stop. And that should accomplish what we want to accomplish. So let's go ahead and run that again. And let's connect and let's bring up RS logic. Oops, let's bring up RS logics again. And now let's put a number in there. Okay, we're connected, right? Yes, okay, so let's disconnect. And notice now we're no longer reading. And if I update this tag, it shouldn't update anymore. Good. So I'm updating it. Good. If we connect again, we're going to read and away we go. So you can see there very easily we have just set up a continuous read on our PLC tag in the controller, tag real. And we did so by setting up or making use of the timer class built into C sharp, which forks off an additional thread. And we're doing an update rate of one second and we're not having any issues whatsoever. So I hope you found this video informative. Please do like and subscribe to our channel and head on over to https colon backslash backslash plcgurus.net. Become a member of what is quickly becoming the largest community of professional engineers, technicians, and technologists who all share a passion for industrial automation and control systems. So this is Fred. Thanks for watching.